suprascapulin uropathy, suprascapular notch and spinoglenoid notch entrapment. Introduction can be caused by suprascapular notch entrapment weakness of both supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Spinoglenoid notch entrapment, weakness of infraspinatus only. Anatomy. Suprascapular nerve, C5, C6, emerges off superior trunk, C5, C6, of brachial plexus travels across posterior triangle of neck to scapula innervates supraspinatus infraspinatus. Suprascapular ligament. Arises from medial base of coracoid and overlays suprascapular notch. Suprascapular artery runs above. Suprascapular nerve runs below. Suprascapular ligament. Arises from medial base of coracoid and overlays suprascapular notch. Suprascapular artery runs above. Spinoglenoid ligament. Arises near spinoglenoid notch. Overlays distal suprascapular nerve. Apular nerve runs below. Posterior view of the scapula showing the superior scapular notch bridged by superior transverse ligament. 1. The suprascapular artery, 2, passes over the ligament and the suprascapular nerve, 3, passes deep to the ligament. Both artery and nerve continue around the notch of the spine into the infraspinatus fossa where they supply the muscles there. Suprascapular ligament. Arises from medial base of coracoid and overlays suprascapular notch. Suprascapular artery runs above. Spinoglenoid ligament arises near spinoglenoid notch. Overlays distal suprascapular nerve apular nerve runs below. Suprascapular ligament. Arises from medial base of coracoid and overlays suprascapular notch. Suprascapular artery runs above. Spinoglenoid ligament arises near spinoglenoid notch. Overlays distal suprascapular nerve apular nerve runs below. Cysts arising from the posterior superior labrum can enlarge and compress the suprascapular nerve against the spinoglenoid notch. Suprascapular notch entrapment. Proximal compression of suprascapular nerve in the suprascapular notch leads to weakness of both supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Path O anatomy. Compression can be from ganglion cyst often associated with labrile tears, transverse scapular ligament entrapment, fracture callus, suprascapular notch entrapment. Clinical presentation. Symptoms, deep, diffuse, posterolateral shoulder pain. Physical exam, pain with palpation of suprascapular notch, weakness of supraspinatus, weakness seen with shoulder abduction to 90 degree, 30 degrees forward flexion, and with internal rotation. Job test positive. Weakness of infraspinatus. Weakness to external rotation with elbow at side. Atrophy along the posterior scapula. Evaluation, MRI. Important to identify a compressive mass with associated cyst. EMG slash NCV diagnostic. See figure. The pen points to the atrophied infraspinatus muscle in this patient with suprascapular nerve entrapment by a ganglion cyst. Treatment. Non-operative, activity modification and organized shoulder rehabilitation program. Indications, no structural lesion seen on MRI. Technique, rehabilitation should be performed for a minimum of six months. Operative treatment. Surgical nerve decompression at suprascapular notch. Indications. Structural lesion seen on MRI, cyst. Failure of extended non-operative management, tilde 1 year. Spinoglenoid notch entrapment. Introduction. Distal compression of suprascapular nerve. Affects infraspinatus only. Path O anatomy. Compression can be due to posterior labrile tears causing a cyst. Spinoglenoid ligament. Spinoglenoid notch ganglion. Traction injury, seen in 45% of volleyball players. Transglenoid fixation lies 1.5 cm medial to glenoid labrum. Presentation. Symptoms. Deep, diffuse, posterolateral shoulder pain. Physical exam, infraspinatus weakness. Weakness to external rotation with elbow at side. Infraspinatus atrophy along the posterior scapula. Supraspinatus strength is normal. Evaluation. MRI. Important to identify posterior labrile lesions with associated cyst. EMG slash nerve conducting velocity is diagnostic. Figure, MRI. 
A large whale circumscribed fluid intensity T1 hypointense slash T2 hyperintense cystic lesion measuring 2.5 by 2.5, axial, X2.8, cc, cm is demonstrated, centered in the spinoglenoid notch, contiguous with the posterior glenoid labrum, in keeping with a paralabral cyst. This results from a focal posterior labrile detachment, about 9 o'clock. No extension of the cyst into the suprascapular notch. No supraspinatus atrophy nor edema. No rotator cuff tear. Biceps tendon in located and unremarkable. No AC joint abnormality. No fractures or marrow abnormality. Conclusion, large spinoglenoid notch paralabral cyst, likely from glenoid labrum tear. No suprascapular notch extension. Treatment. Non-operative. Activity modification and organized shoulder rehab program. Indications, no structural lesion seen on MRI. Technique, posterior shoulder capsule stretching. Operative treatment. Arthroscopic cyst decompression and labrile repair indications, labrile lesion with associated cyst seen on MRI spinoglenoid ligament release with nerve decompression indications no structural lesion seen on MRI and failure of extended non-operative management, tilde one year, technique. Posterior approach commonly utilized decompress nerve in spinoglenoid notch. I want to thank Professor Mustafa Karaan, who contributed my shoulder surgery knowledge and changed my life. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe my non-profit YouTube channel.